One of the most annoying things about collecting retro hardware uh, is namely the people that you deal with whenever you're collecting retro hardware. Most of the time people are pretty chill. Uh, you get the occasional tweaker, especially here in Florida. Uh, never go pick up computers from Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. That's uh, how you get involved in a meth bust or shanked or sexually assaulted or all three at the same time. It's not a good time. And to continue the theme of not having a good time, I unfortunately have to mention uh, this mess. <laughs> This, this computer actually has a very rough story, uh, mainly because of who I acquired it from and uh, how uh, rough they were with it. And then unfortunately it also, I, I was a bad steward to it. I did, not, I did not protect it from abuse like I should have. And uh, I'm paying the price for it, unfortunately. Uh, 40 million years ago, whenever I used to do cell phone repair as my day job, uh, you obviously you meet a lot of really interesting people. Um, you, meet, you meet a lot of like good people for the most part. A lot of people are pretty chill. Um, then you meet the people who are chill but are like really weird. And this was one of those situations. The person, I'm not gonna name who it was, uh, but this, uh, this individual was uh, fairly often very hard up for money and um, did not have the best living situation and uh, was um, it was gross <laughs> where they were. Um, and so this computer, this Windows 95, 98 computer was being used actively up until like, what, was, what would that have been? iPhone 6S, iPhone 7 era. So like way longer than it probably should have been. And that user uh, abused the crap out of this thing. So the battery life is basically shot uh, the screen on it has horrific yellow bleed all over it. The hard drive somehow still works, but you can tell that it has seen better days. Uh, but miraculously, it did still power on. It was still functional. It was fun to play with. I mean, it's a Windows 98 laptop. It's fun. And, and you know, it's got, a, it's got a Pentium MMX in this thing. So this thing is basically the laptop equivalent to the Packard Bell. Just, you know, it's you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about the other way around. It's you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. I, I did actually plan on making a video on this back in the day. I think I think around the time that I acquired this, this would have been around the time shortly before I did the A64 Gold video, uh, the upgrade video for the uh, the Packard Bell. Um, and I did power this thing on. I did get it wiped. I did get it a uh, clean image and my ice maker is making noise, cool. Uh, I did get it completely, I did get everything reinstalled and um, was playing with it and it was, it was shaping up to be something that I would play with. And um, I'm not gonna name names, but uh, somebody visited us and uh, decided to clean things up a little bit. And um, uh, my laptop may have been knocked off the table that it was on and uh, cracked the housing pretty bad. So that was um, where one of these pieces fell off. Uh, and I was pretty upset at the time, but I was, eh, whatever. I think I powered it on and it still powered on. Everything was good, no big deal. Uh, but then I ended up moving and things got weird and that was going into 2019, 2020, I think. So my living situation there got weird too. And I never got a chance to use it again. Fast forward to now when I had to move again very suddenly. Uh, also not going to name names, but somebody, somebody else caused it to fall which is a lot more damage to it this time. And I'm very upset about it. And I wanted to uh, make this video as a PSA about just take better care of your damn electronics, you, you hippies, because this thing makes me sad. It has so much nice potential in it, but like it's so beat up that it's at the point where I really don't think it's worth me trying to repair. I don't even think it's worth me bothering to clean up at this point, it's that bad. So uh, I guess we'll just, I guess I'll get the camera closer and we'll, We'll play, we'll see where things go. From this profile shot, it actually doesn't look like it's in that bad condition, you know, honestly. There's a little detritus here and there and like the screen kind of, oh, that wobbles a lot. And oh, oh, that hinge is kind of broken. And oh, 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 like the battery and like the back piece and like this entire, oh, oh, and it's like flexing that you probably can't see because I put my hand in front of the camera, like it's now flexing, like the entire thing is now holding on. 
to like this little strip of plastic right here. And like, oh, this laptop has definitely seen some better days, uh, which is quite unfortunate. In fact, just to kind of show you uh, how bad the damage is, here's all just the little bits and bobs that fell out from me taking the battery out to make sure it wasn't swollen. And then when I put the battery back in and slid it in place, the door just popped off. And this is a piece of plastic that kind of goes on the back here to cover the, to protect the, the back docking area here. Uh, and like, I wasn't kidding when I said like this entire piece, like you can see the indent in the plastic right here where it's just like, there's just nothing there for structural integrity. Like that, that is, that shift button was also fucked there for a second. Oh, great. This is gonna be all kinds of fun. It doesn't really look that bad in all honesty. It's, you know, like you can tell that it's been well loved. The space bar's got a little uh, rash mark on it, but like it's a respectable computer. Uh, I haven't actually powered this thing on in like forever. I'm pretty sure I said that in the intro, but uh, I do have a power cable here. This is actually the power supply for my Dell monitor, the one with the red line on it. And it actually was what I was using to power this thing on originally. Now, again, I haven't, uh, I had it plugged in during the intro just to kind of give it a little bit extra time to charge. I'm convinced that, well, it, like it didn't catch on fire earlier when I plugged it in for the first time. So I think we're fine. I'm pretty sure this thing's gonna catch on fire whenever I actually hit the power button. So, um, you know what to, what to do for situations like this. It's where you just uh, get your glass ready. And ignore the fact that that says no ball. I, I thought it was birthday cake. Oh, it is birthday cake. Ignore the fact that that says birthday cake whiskey. We're not celebrating anything. This is a funeral, if anything. <laughs> All right, everybody, make a wish. I wish for this not to suck. Well, should I turn the lights on? No, I think, I, I think I'm gonna leave everything the way it is. We're just gonna hit the power button and we're just gonna see if it turns on because quite honestly, I don't trust anything. Boy. Uh, I guess one little feature that I should have pointed out and I didn't is it's got like a little monochrome LCD status panel thing up here, which is pretty cool. Um, as far as I can tell, it's actually powered by the BIOS and not by uh, anything software related on the, on the laptop. So this should still be working as long as everything else is. All right, ignore the, uh, the weird uh, angle change. I totally didn't like pick up my phone to kind of get like a closer view and then accidentally hit the button to turn off the screen and uh, stop the recording. Definitely wouldn't do that. Only an amateur would do that. Let's just hit the button, which is here. So I don't see any charging lights or anything first off, so I'm not super hopeful that this is gonna work, but... Oh, hey, hey! We've got, we got a green light. The LCD has some light. Oh, that did not sound good. Oh, it is displaying video. Configuring panel 06. Oh man, I can actually see this way better looking through my phone than I can through in real life. Oh, this is like bad looking. Oh, I wish y'all could hear this. Hang on, I need, I need, I need, I need y'all to hear how pathetic this fan sounds. It is trying its best. It actually doesn't sound that bad, all things considered. Um, I'm a little concerned because I don't hear a hard drive. Press F1 to resume, F2 to set up, resume. Okay, the fan just died. Oh, I don't hear any drive whatsoever in this thing. It's not making any activity noise. I absolutely hear it humming though. Why is it not resuming the BIOS? That's weird. I mean, obviously the CMOS battery is bad, but it should still let me boot. Okay, no big deal. Let's try that again. Okay, I guess we'll go F2 to setup. Hey, CMOS checksum is invalid. Default values will be loaded. All right. Let me just move these fragmented bits of <laughs> this very nice computer away. No big deal. This is a very awkward angle for me, so I apologize if I'm blocking some shots. I like, it's, it sucks. Oh no, that's a problem. Onboard IDE drive zero, none. Auto type fixed disk. Type auto. 
Oh, okay, okay, good. So it, uh, it auto-detected, oh, thank God, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, oh no, not this poor hard drive. Let's see, everything else looks good. Um, there is no CD-ROM in this computer. Yeah, no, it's just floppy and PCMCIA. So, so if I hit this, I'm sorry, what, excuse me? Oh, okay, so it's just a list that I can pick from. So CD is the first option, is what that is. Okay, that makes sense. I was about to say, I was like, uh, <laughs> what do you mean CD drive? There's no CD drive here. It's really funny how much my camera is compensating and making the screen look normal. It is incredibly yellow and burned and it looks not good. I also, hang on, I'm gonna grab the camera here and get a little closer so I can show you guys this. The, the LCD doesn't do pixel perfect scaling either. I know a lot of you are gonna be like, James, what the hell are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in like really close here. So do you see that the top of that E, like where that entire row is, it's all one pixel that's demonstrating like that single line, right? But everything else is like two pixels. Like look at the end, like it's only got like one tiny little pixel off. So like it's, it's doing uneven pixel scaling. So like this is not running at a native resolution for this panel, so that's annoying. Like it's one of those things that's not the end of the world, but it does make the panel look a little bit worse than like it quote unquote should. Select TV mode. Oh yeah, cool feature. I forgot to mention about this. It's got both composite out as well as S video out on this side, uh, which is kind of rad. Uh, video expansion enabled. Okay, expands the video image to full screen. This may cause distortion of your video. So they tell you that it does not correct. So if I do video expansion disabled, does that mean it's gonna be pixel perfect? Oh, dude, that's actually a really cool feature to have in, in, a, in a laptop like this. To have like a Windows 98 machine with pixel perfect output? That's kind of, that's kind of nuts. Okay, so it looks like we've got a two gig hard drive and 160 megabytes of RAM. So that's not bad at all. Uh, onboard stereo sound is enabled and you can change audio options. Uh, let's see, memory configuration. Oh, it lied to me. Oh, it like mega lied to me. So, okay, this is interesting. So there's 32 megabytes of SD RAM that's like pre-built in, like soldered in, and then there's 28 megabytes of an additional SD RAM chip added. So we're not even like a 64 meg here. Interesting, okay. Power management activation based on the power source's battery, power button mode on off, power savings, maximum battery life. Okay, yeah, we're gonna keep that just because I don't, this, uh, this battery's not gonna be good and I don't really think this, this charger is correct either. So auto dim with battery only is on, cooling control is performance. Yeah, crank that fan, soldier boy. Uh, I don't think I, oh, that's right, I, I loaded the hard drive. So, okay, let's, let's see if she boots. I guess at this point I can turn off the, uh, well, no, because I want to show the, See if I can get anything on the monochrome LCD. That'd be kind of fun. Ah, there we go. Uh-oh. Oh, no, wait, hang on. If I did this, I, I probably definitely deliberately did this. Let's see, what do we got? Yeah, okay. Oh, there's a games directory. All right. Wolfenstein 3D, Carmen San Diego. That's gotta be the adventures of something. I don't know. Uh, Chips, I'm assuming that's Chips Challenge, Duke 3D, Doom 2. Oregon, Oregon Trail, Simant? Okay, yeah, I, I definitely booted this and I was having some fun with it, so. All right, well, let's let's try some DOS games real quick. Let's see how that works. Oh, we have some sound and it's very quiet. That is as loud as it will go. Okay, maybe I have it turned down in software. I must have like the sound. No, I don't. That is literally just as loud as it will go. Yeah, like that's completely inaudible. Um, so what was I using? Uh, so it's got Sound Blaster, okay. Well, that's obviously not working in DOS. Try Journal MIDI. Oh, I don't have a tester on this, do I? No, I don't. Let's see if that uh, improved things a little bit here. Yeah, that's, now I have no sound. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, like it runs and it runs pretty well and it looks really good too. Like this looks really high resolution. So let's try Wolf 3D. Oh my God, these speakers are like so pathetic. That's gotta be a driver thing. 
I mean, it recognizes it as a sound source, or as a sound source. <laughs> no sound effects, though. Oh? Huh? No, it's got sound effects. Let's see. Oh, there we go, look at that. Ah, where is he? Oh God. Why are the sound effects so loud though? That's what I want to know. Ah. Dude, this game's like a survival horror on this thing. Oh my God, oh no, I'm dead. Oh, I'm so bad. It doesn't help that I'm standing sideways to it, but. <laughs> All right, uh, well, you know what we have to do now is... Oregon Trail requires a mouse to run. Oh, I don't have mouse drivers working either, ugh. All right, well, now that we've had our fun with that, let's go ahead and start the window shell. Oh, no, not scan disk. Uh, actually, I might as well probably let it scan scan disk. Oh, this LCD is really not good. Yeah, you can see like a wet spot right there or like an impact. Hey. Oh, those speakers are shot to hell and back, oh. Yeah. Oh, that panel ghosts like you would not. Oh, that's gross. It looks so good for DOS, but like it ghosts like a motherfucker. Uh, infrared is apparently disabled, so that's good to know. Uh, ah, volume's at halfway. Let's crank that bitch up. Um, okay, so let's see. What all did I put on this? Log off James. So this is, yeah, this is definitely me uh, reinstalling uh, Windows 98. Oh, this is like very clean Windows 98. There's like nothing here. Okay, well, I'm kind of upset. I thought I would have had some other games on here uh, or, or something, you know, some software or something fun to do. Well, I do want to at least test if the floppy drive works. So I do have my Doom 2 floppy. Yeah, the hard drive seems to be working fine. That was a very loud click. Okay, speakers are working be much better now. Amazing what happens when you turn the volume up, right? <laughs> oh, it's thinking about it. Oh, it's thinking very hard. Oh, I think the floppy drive might actually just be dead. Cause like that, like it sounds like a floppy drive initializing. So I'm wondering if it's getting stuck in an initialization loop where it's just constantly just rebooting itself. Okay, well, Windows is still working. So it's gotta be trying to load. So let me eject the floppy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, the window shell just completely crashed. Oh, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's not responding to control delete. Oh, that's really not good. Oh, it's not responding to anything. Oh, that's extremely not good. Oh no. I wonder if the hard drive, uh, it might, might I'm stupid, there is a CD drive, it's right here in the front. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised I didn't install like a uh, Mac Warrior or anything on this. I thought I would've. All right, so I have returned with my copy of Mac Warrior 2 and also my copy of Half-Life Game of the Year edition, uh, just because I felt like being mean to this poor computer. Uh, Mac Warrior 2 should run perfectly fine. Like literally no issues whatsoever. Uh, Half-Life, on the other hand, is not going to go well, and it's going to be really funny. <laughs> hey, hey, so I guess I didn't have to enable the CD in the BIOS after all. <sighs> Welcome to the MechWarrior 2 setup program. All right, so we're going to do a full install here because I have two gigabytes on this thing. Like, I can play, I can load this entire game. Actually, that's not true. I cannot load this entire game into RAM. I can load it without the movies into RAM, though. That is maybe stink if I've ever heard it. <laughs> I'm thoroughly enjoying hearing this jet engine take off. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that I guess that's everything. Well, I guess all that's left to do is to play some Mech Warrior 2 now. Actually, First off, let me check and see. I will say though, the, the, the desktop is animating, so it's got some kind of graphics acceleration going on. Um, so we're 800 by 700. Okay, so we've got a Neo Magic Magic Graph 128 XD running at 800 by 600. Okay, this'll be good. I can't wait. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, it's playing the video. 
It's so quiet, you can't hear it. I'm gonna have to do this again. Oh, that sounds so bad. <laughs> Those speakers are absolutely fried. I have no idea how fried them though. That's really weird. Maybe they were this bad when I got it and I just don't remember. Um, so fun thing about the, the PC version of MechWarrior 2 as opposed to the DOS version, uh, it does this weird gimmick that like most DOS games did in the era for whatever reason that were you know ported to DirectX and Windows is everything is just in a frame and like it's there, which like I get because like this is GUI, like you obviously you had Windows like three and all that then introduced like the concept of like, oh, here's a window, but like, man, did they, did they go hard? <laughs> I definitely uh, had the DOS version growing up just from, uh, cause it was full screen. So like it had to have been the DOS version. Oh yeah, look at that, Clan Jade Falcon. Oh no, we get pop-ups. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, yeah, I'll play with quick tips cause I'm a newbie. Record me, I need, a, no, I need a new allegiance. Never mind. that was not the option I wanted. Uh, how do I, aha, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna hit enter. Look at that, I'm a mech warrior. I've got 1707 honor. I should probably do training, but that's fine. I just wanted to play with the, with the room here because the room here is always fun. Oh, look at that hollow projector. And then they just like <laughs> put font all over it. Like it's, it's, God, I love old games so much, dude. Oh, I'm having some nostalgia moments. I, I just wanna like, I just wanna like shoot people. I wanna like not know how to walk in a straight line and just embarrass myself. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mission briefing, okay, let's go. Put me in, Chief. We're gonna launch. Put me in, Chief. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, CD spinning up. Oh, here we go, full 3D. So how's the 3D performance on this thing? Okay. Whoop. All right, let's go to about half speed. All systems nominal. Oh yes, James is happy. I don't, oops. Nope, nope, turn, turn back on, turn back on. We're good. There we go. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right, we've got a kit fox. Uh, how do I, okay, so enter is switch weapon group. Uh, how do I, oh, I fire. Oh, there he is. Oh, okay, so I can click. Oh, that's right, I have it in single fire mode. Oh, no, I want group fire. Oh yeah, eat my, eat my LRMs. Oh yeah. I'm legging you and I'm not even trying, dude. I'm so good at this game. I legged him and I wasn't even trying. Bro, I'm a gamer. Look at that. Dude, I'm a gamer. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I need to I need to leave for right now before I just spend another three hours playing like Warrior. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So the performance of it for older DOS games, perfectly fine. Obviously Doom ran okay. Uh, which is, you know, like a class 386 game. So it absolutely should have ran perfectly fine with no issues whatsoever. Then we have a more modern, like first kind of 3D game that was designed for Windows 95 and DirectX when it first came out. So obviously it would play fine. But now, I don't know why I'm trying to like bother hiding my CD key. Now we're gonna, now we're gonna, now we're gonna make this computer scream in agony. Get some, some techno music blaring. Uh, maybe we can watch some Weezer. Isn't Weezer on this disc or no, it was the entertainment, Microsoft Entertainment Pack. There was some, there was some other weird uh, music video or I guess it's just video just in general that I found on the CD one time. There's something there. I just don't remember what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and install Half-Life and then in, in the, well, I'm gonna let that run in the background. I'm gonna try a DOS game in Windows to see if sound works. Oh, digital wave file, it's playing. 
setup has determined that some system components may be less than system requirements. Display <laughs> slash T. Tested 800 by 600 at 256 colors required. 640 by 480 at 65,000 colors. No, I do not want more information concerning these results. Yes, I wish to continue running setup. Oh, that looks like shit. This is gonna be great. <laughs> I was about to say like, oh, I didn't even check to see how big the game is. Like, oh man, I'm gonna make sure it fits. And then I'm like, oh, it's a CD, it's 650 megs. I got two gigs, baby. Oh wait, hang on. I need to point something out. Apparently at one point during the reinstallation, I got so frustrated with boot disks that I think I just booted off it and then copied the entire contents of the Windows 98 uh, CD. <laughs> like the install CD. Yep, there it is. That's the entire Windows. Okay. Hey, the Adventures of Micro Man. That's what that was. I want to play that. I loved this game as a kid. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, listen to that MIDI. Uh, can I not make the game any bigger? The story registering engine availability. Whoa, could you have like, if you're working on financial, we would license WAP for use as your Sprite game engine. For more information, please contact. That's a lot of information I'm not going to have to blur out. Okay, that's fine. Hey, so real quick editing James here. So we got, I got to the point where uh, Mr. Brian here put all his personal information in Microman because he thought he was, you know, cool, which I mean, objectively he was, but yeah. anyway, I just wanted to point out that uh, I, I looked up who he was because I was like, well, I mean, like if he's like out there, like maybe I can get away with showing his information. Uh, my man, my man worked for Monolith Studios <laughs> until 2002. So I don't think he worked on fear, but like he was one of the founding engineers and probably their code base. So he's one of the reasons why I liked fear so much. I literally just learned about this like 20 seconds before I started filming this. I'm extremely pleased because I love Monolith Software after playing Fear, but like, like what the hell? <laughs> I mean, I guess the guy slaps his names all over the place so I can at least show his name, but like, yeah, look at this, it runs fine. And we've got sound. So to be fair, this is a Windows game, not a, uh, not a DOS game, but oh, that makes me happy. Okay, I'm glad that I did that for myself. And we got Chips Challenge. So is this the DOS version or is this the Windows version from the Entertainment Pack? Oh, I think this is the DOS version. Oh, this is like the weird one. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do we're gonna do VGA because it's got 16 colors. Uh, we could do beeper music. Uh, I don't have ad lib. Uh, I guess maybe because this has Sound Blaster, so maybe there's ad lib emulation. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is like the weird DOS version. I don't like this. Oh! Yeah, we got some sound. Yeah, this is a port of the Amiga original, I think it is. Yeah, converted by audiovisual. Um, this one's weird. I like the one that's in the Windows Entertainment Pack better. Because this one's just weird, but like it's like oddly, uh, it's very Amiga, even though it's, you know, running a DOS. It's all the same puzzles and everything, but it's like slower. And like IMO, the music doesn't slap quite as much. And by that, I mean the music isn't a, a demonization earworm that you'll just be humming to yourself for the rest of your known existence on this planet. Hey, there you go, Yowzer, first try. Okay. Okay. How do I? Uh huh. Hey, there we go. All right, we're just gonna not do this anymore. We're just gonna not do this anymore. We're gonna not, we're gonna not do this anymore. We're gonna not do this anymore. There we go. Oh, I wonder now that I'm in Windows, will this work? Oh, this might work. I'm gonna do Sound Blaster. So this is the MECC version too. Like the original mech, uh, not the original, obviously that was on mainframes, but like, but this wasn't like a weird like later port. This was like actually, this program is set to run and all other programs were closed if you continue. Do you want to continue? No, okay, I'll wait a second. Well, I guess we'll wait until Half-Life's done. That's annoying. Does Carmen San Diego work? Oh, that is a chunky ass mouse, okay. Yeah, there we go. Wow, that's rude. Are you new here? No. Please type in the name you normally use. Ugh. Uh, 
Uh, I want to be very immature and use four-letter words, but yes, I'm new here. You have been identified, Solaris. Your current rank is rookie. Cool. Flash. Does that mean newsflash? National treasure stolen from Istanbul. Oh no. Why is this like very loud compared to all the other stuff? Let's apprehend this th thief by Sunday at 5 p.m. Dude, that's like three days from now. What? The uh, okay. Let's depart. Never mind. I want to uh, crime. Sex. Yeah. Hobby? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've actually never played this version of Carmen San Diego. I was really hoping it was the. Duh! Okay, that was a violent quick noise. I was really hoping it was the version that had like the bopping theme song. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh boy. I can register my product with Sierra. Yeah, let me, um, this actually has ethernet. I could connect it to the internet and immediately regret everything that I've ever done in my life. Oh boy, we're, we're gonna register via printer. Let's go. Uh, nope, never mind. That's a lot of effort for a joke. Mm. You know, with as many times as I've bought Valve games over the years, you'd think I'd get some slack here, but... You know what the best part is, is that there's literally no reason for me to blur this out. And I'm doing it anyway, just to spite y'all. Oh, there it is, it was the sound. You kids probably know it as the Steam screenshot sound nowadays, but like, I mean, the videos are actually performing very well. This actually might be a better graphics card than I thought. Okay, it's not running very great on this menu. I can't wait to see how bad it loads in. Oh, this is not running well at all. There's some moments of 60, okay. Maybe it's just that, that back and forth motion just doesn't look really good. Video modes, let's see, what are we running in? 640 by 480? We're running in 320 by 240 and we're running in software rendering. Oof. Half-Life requires the current version of device drivers in your system, 3D. Oh, so I straight up just can't display 3D. Oh, no, hang on, I click, I click direct 3D. Oh. We'll hit okay. Well, they didn't restart the menu, so maybe the menu still runs in software. I mean, that would make sense. So, okay, I guess we will just do a new game. Oh, that is chunky. Oh, that is bilinear filter to crap and back. Oh, that looks awful. It doesn't look that bad in the recording, but man, in person, does that look awful. Like, you can see, like, the... <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna come across when I blow it up in editing, but, like, you can see, like, the single pixel that they're using to alias on either side of the single pixel of white. Oh, that looks so bad. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go, baby. What is that, like three frames a second? Four frames a second, baby? Oh, it's trying so hard. Oh, okay, we are officially in like one frame a second territory. Oh, that is some tr chunky everything. Oh no. Oh, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, let's see what happens. Let me load it in. I just want to see what will happen if we do 320 by 240 software, because this has an MMX in it. Like, it's kind of beefy. It's a laptop, sure, but it's kind of beefy. Okay. Pretty sure the game just crashed. Imbicin wants me to get internet access. Go away. So the game just crashed. So that's a good sign. I like how mouse sensitivity is under advanced controls. Good Lord, how far we have come as a society. All right, let's see how she goes in software. I'm sure it'll run like decently. Oh, look at that, we're already running better, okay. Oh yeah, this thing actually slaps, okay. Look at that, that's like a, that's like 15 to 20 frames a second. There's Barney, no, come back Barney. Bye Barney. You're like 12 pixels. Oh, dude, this is totally playable. Oh, okay, well, maybe not like playable to nowadays standards, but like if I was a kid and I had access to this laptop, I would have played the crap out of Half-Life on this. Oh my God. Oh, oh, I really need to fix that mouse sensitivity. This is awful. Imagine trying to play a game like this nowadays. <laughs> Where you're just like, nee, eh, headshot, yeah, flick. Yeah, I cut the smoke off, okay. Well, I'm sure we all learned a valuable lesson today. 
I don't know what that lesson was. I certainly didn't. It started off me being pissed off at people who abuse their laptops and then I abuse the laptop. It was fun though, so that makes it all worthwhile, right? Laptops like these are just really fun for me. I don't know what it is about them. There's just something so strange about having Windows, like an old version of Windows in these little portable form factors because they're all so universally shit that they're so much fun to play with and figure out what their limitations are and just to figure out where they break. Like, I'm sure you hear what's going on right now. It's not good. <laughs> Objectively, I should be doing any of this on the Packard Bell. Hell, I could be doing this on my Steam Deck with DOSBox to a way better degree. And yet here I am making fun of people who have owned this thing many years prior who were not good stewards of this hardware, which arguably I'm not either now, so uh, I'm not one to talk, but it's fun. Anyway, I'm starting to repeat myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go load, I wanna load like MechWarrior 3 on this. I honestly thought I had MechWarrior 3 on this, and that's why I wanted to demo, which is why I grabbed MechWarrior 2. I, I don't know how fan where my CD of 3 is, it's somewhere in my storage. Anyway, if you liked everything, you know, leave a comment. Um, if you wanna see more weird computers. I've got the Windows XP gaming computer over there. I know I loaded the Crisis demo on it at some point, so it's got something fun in it. I even went out of my way to like order a new set of mouse and keyboards, which by the way, I was not very pleased about this keyboard. It's stupid. Uh, I, I was very pleased about this mouse because it's like a cherry mouse, like you cherry MX, you know, and like it's beige and everything. And I did no research on it whatsoever. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be so cool to have like a, an actual cherry, you know, legacy mouse. And I get it, and it's a laser mouse. And then I look at the cable, and the Amazon seller lied. It's just got an adapter on it, so I was very sad. But I have a mouse that's made by Cherry, and it was made in 2020, so there's that. What are you still doing here? Hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment. I'm gonna go finish off this birthday whiskey which is uh, exactly what it sounds like. It's literally just not very good whiskey, and then all you taste is sprinkles afterwards, which means it's actually kind of good, but I'm not going to admit to it, because I'm not quite that basic white bitch. I am one, but.